Let me start by saying, I am not a debunker. The question presented here is, does mankind possess UFO technology? The answer is a resounding yes. Contained in these books are over 100 years of proof from the patent office that man has possessed the ability to create the objects seen in the sky that people have called UFOs. For example, a magnetohydrodynamic craft patent filed in 1964 was for a heavier-than-air flying craft surrounded by a plasma. A plasma sphere around an MHD craft will make that craft appear as a glowing ball of light. That same plasma absorbs radio waves and thus makes the craft invisible to radar. Does this sound like any UFO sighting that you've ever heard of before? You can see this patent, along with many others, in Volume 4 of the UFO How-To series entitled Magnetohydrodynamics. In the science of rocketry, we learn that to achieve a low Earth orbit, a speed of 17,000 miles per hour must be attained. To escape the Earth from the ground, a speed of 24,200 miles per hour must be attained. Would you believe that a plasma propulsion patent filed in 1959 had thrust 60 times more powerful than chemical rockets? You can see this one for yourself in Volume 3, Plasma Propulsion, of the UFO How-To series. I want to convey the importance of getting out of the theoretical for people to see the facts as they actually exist. Talking in theoretical or esoteric terms easily becomes a misdirection. For example, what is antigravity? Antigravity devices are actually quite commonplace. Ladders, balloons, helicopters, your muscles, etc. I don't say this to be cute or smarmy. I say this because the word antigravity has been used to keep the populace misdirected. Like a stage magician. Antigravity has been used to keep you thinking about theoretical concepts instead of letting your attention focus on proven techniques. Antigravity presumes some sort of cancellation of the local gravity field. It is this process of fuzzy definition that keeps people in the dark. It is our concepts of gravity that must be adjusted to understand the UFO phenomenon. I say, dispense with the word antigravity, which is a theoretical term. Instead, use the word electrokinetic, which is proven by many years of patents. I will use the term electrogravitic as a blanket term for all systems which employ high-power electromagnetic currents for creating high-speed electrokinetic propulsion. But don't think about this as neutralizing gravity. This is way beyond neutralizing gravity. The word electrogravitic is the key to understanding UFO systems generally. To understand further, you must comprehend how a capacitor functions. Put it simply, a capacitor is a break in a current. The electrogravitic effect is best described as a propulsion in one direction by a high-powered stimulus. When working with capacitors, high voltage impulses in a capacitor will cause it to lurch in the direction of that capacitor's north pole. Following Wallace's work, high speed rotation of elements with odd nuclear spin values cause directional movement that is neither centrifugal nor centripetal motion. Ultimately, elements with odd nuclear spin values increase the propulsive effect regardless of whether the high speed rotation method is used or the high voltage electrical impulse method is used. To create the electrogravitic effect, you start by breaking up a constant high voltage into pulses. Those pulses go into materials with odd nuclear spin values. For example, you could put the output of a quarter million volt impulse transformer or a resonance transformer's output into a large plate of barium titanate. Barium titanate is very desirable for this because barium, which has a positive 3 slash 2 nuclear spin value, and titanium, which has a negative 7 slash 2 or a negative 5 slash 2, depending on the isotope, creates the differential that is most effective for creating the electrogravitic effect. Barium titanate is also a material that has a high K dielectric value, meaning that it can store an electric charge very well. Linda Howe's mystery metal fragment most likely did in fact come from a UFO style craft. If you look at the materials involved, a layer of bismuth with a positive 9 slash 2 odd nuclear spin value and magnesium with a negative 5 slash 2 nuclear spin value and even the trace amounts of zinc at less than 3% with a positive 5 slash 2 do indeed create 
the differential that is most effective for creating the electrogravitic effect. The higher the differentials involved and the greater the odd nuclear spin value, the greater the effect. Nine slash two elements like germanium and uranium are ideal for creating the electrogravitic effect. Unfortunately, these elements are usually radioactive, but this does account for why people who have alleged to witness UFO sites where they have landed being radioactive. In John Searle's levity disk, the runners are constructed of a mixture of aluminum, iron, and neodymium. Neodymium with negative 7 slash 2 nuclear spin value and aluminum with a positive 5 slash 2 nuclear spin value. The iron does not have an odd, it is a positive 1 slash 2. And then there is nylon that he uses in his supposedly as a binder and he indicates that it's for the generation of static electricity. Electrons and atoms have both electron spin, the rotation, and the electron's orbital angular momentum. By combining them, we get the total angular momentum. But we are not interested in electrons. It is the total intrinsic angular momentum of the nucleus when stimulated by high voltage pulses or by high speed rotation of the material that contains the nucleus with odd spin values that we are after to create the electrogravitic effect. A characteristic of the total protons and neutrons is that the nucleus of odd mass number will have a half integer spin and nucleus of even number will have a whole integer spin. You could conceive it like the odd nucleus is egg-shaped and does not rotate evenly. This directional momentum is exaggerated by the high power stimulus. Henry William Wallace was a scientist at GE Aerospace in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania and with GE Reentry Systems in Philadelphia. In his two patents, Method and Apparatus for Generating a Secondary Gravitational Force Field, and his Method and Apparatus for Generating a Dynamic Force Field, he chronicles the secret of the odd nuclear spin values. In the abstracts of his disclosure, he states, This is an apparatus and method for generating a non-electromagnetic force field due to the dynamic interaction of relatively moving bodies through gravitational coupling and for transforming such force fields into energy for doing useful work. While these volumes in the UFO How-To series are subdivided into their various categories, the sciences are not mutually exclusive. The introduction of electrostatics into the science of rocketry paved the way for plasma propulsion. Electrostatics were avoided in this series specifically to keep the focus on the patents that most resemble UFO sightings not to make the series a definitive history of space travel. Most electrostatic patents, much like the ion wind drives, fall short of the speed, power, and maneuverability that witnesses of UFOs identify. Plasma propulsion relies upon the science of magnetohydrodynamics, but the MHD patents are distinct enough to be different from the rocketry style of the plasma propulsion systems. Again, the emphasis is on the UFO craft, not the history of propulsion. Across the volumes of the UFO How-To series will be found 3,000 pages of patents, most of which that have lapsed into the public domain, regarding UFO technology. Armed with the knowledge contained in the UFO How-To series, you need no longer be just a spectator of the UFO phenomena. You can be in the know about the UFO technology yourself.